Our next speaker is Yulong Choi, who will talk us, tell us about probabilistic reasoning and learning for trustworthy AI. Um, hi, my name is Yu Zhang Choi, uh, coming from Arizona State University, where um, I joined as an assistant professor last fall. Uh, before that, I, I did my PhD at UCLA, um, and I'm, I'm visiting Simons this semester for the uh, Logic and Database and AI program. Um, so today, I thought I'd, I'd talk about kind of broadly what, what I'm interested in, and um, in particular, you know, how we can use these um, probabilistic models that have some, some um, nice theory behind them to, to solve some problems in uh, trustworthy AI domain. So uh, some examples, um, some example questions that I'm thinking about when I say trustworthy AI and, and ML issues. Um, we often see that AI-based decisions can kind of exacerbate uh, bias that's in the data. So Fairness issues are also kind of um, um, something that, that a lot of people are, are getting interested in. So for example, um, one, one simple way to, to ask this is if you're given, um, if you're given some, some AI system making decisions that are actually affecting people, um, how fair or like how, how different those decisions are across different demographic groups. Um, if you have a particular prediction model, um, you might ask, why was that uh, particular decision made? Explain um, that this particular decision. You could also ask um, if you're, for instance, making like medical uh, diagnosis, um, you need to like make decisions sometimes with uh, partially available records. You might be wondering, you know, how, how robust are these decisions? And um, my kind of view um, in, in my research is that a lot of these uh, questions, to some extent, can can all be written as probabilistic questions, right? So uh, a very simple uh, sort of notion of fairness that people look in, uh, look into is essentially just comparing what is the expected or like average decision. Um, made by, by an AI model across different demographic groups and, and comparing if there's a discrepancy in that the average outcome. Um, you could, for example, um, ask for, um, ask you know, how, how robust some decision made with missing values are by looking at um, how, how much that decision will change if, if you consider all the possible um, ways that missing, the, those missing values can be comp completed according to some distribution. So because um, you can kind of formulate these questions as a probabilistic uh, queries, what I'm interested in is actually kind of capturing that like underlying uh, distribution where you want to deploy the system as some probabilistic model. And then um, we want to reason about a, a given sort of machine learning model's behaviors through probabilistic inference. And what's nice about this is um, if we can, if we know how to write down these uh, different questions in interest for the AI domain as a uh, probabilistic inference task, then as long as we can, uh, we, we make a good choice about the model and, and the inference uh, engine, we can answer a lot of this, this questions through this single framework. So for that, we need to, be careful in, in how we're choosing the model and, and um, inference algorithms. Uh, so first, we want to choose a, a model where we can compute uh, various, often they're very hard, uh, probabilistic queries efficiently. And, and for now, um, let's just focus on actually answering them exactly and efficiently because um, 
the motivation was regarding like trustworthiness and, and reliability. So let's first look at when we can actually answer these exactly. Um, and we want to choose a, a model that allows us to answer these queries um, while still representing uh, a, you know, complex real world uh, distributions. And um, I said, you know, underlying distribution, which means not just capturing whatever data we're seeing, but really um, handling, for example, different uncertainties that you might not be able to see just straight, straight from data, right? Um, especially in, in domains where the fairness might be uh, an issue. Sometimes you can't trust the data. There might be um, you know, in historical bias in the data. You, you may have bias that are, are noisy uh, on data. So, so the goal really is to, to capture that underlying distribution through a model that will allow us to answer um, various probabilistic inference tasks. So um, in this talk, I'll sort of, um, tell you about the model that I like uh, for this framework, which is um, called probabilistic circuits. So if um, people who were at the, the bookend a couple weeks ago um, might be might um, remember the, the talk on probabilistic circuits, I'll, I'll kind of um, give a high level overview of, of what these models are about. Um, and then I'll, I'll give one example of how we can use them to, to um, address some algorithmic fairness issues. Okay, so what are these uh, models, probabilistic circuits? At a very high level, you can just view this as a um, computational graph that's, that's recursively defining distributions. So at the very base level, you have a single, for instance, a univariate Gaussian, that's a, that's a simple distribution. Now the idea is we can combine um, distributions recursively to define more and more complex ones. So a, a weighted sum or, or a, a convex combination of, of uh, distributions is also a dis prob probability distribution. Um, you can multiply distributions to obtain another distribution um, over a larger set of variables. And the idea is that we combine these recursively to get um, to capture more and more complex distributions. Right. So um, when it comes to actually um, computing, for example, probabilities out of these models, it's very simple. I said it's a computational graph. So all you have to do is when you want to compute some probability uh, given, given some values for, for your variable, you just plug those values in. Um, at the leaf, and then just um, do, do a feedforward evaluation following um, following the semantics given by the computational graph. So you're starting from the um, from the leaf, just computing weighted sums and products until you get some value um, at the root node, which gives you the probability for, for that specific um, um, values that you gave as input. Okay, so that's that's. Um, all simple so far, this is just sums and products that are nested. Um, why is this special? Um, so earlier I said we, we, want a model, we want our model to answer different probabilistic questions efficiently. Right? So what's nice about them is we can start um, enforcing some structural constraints on the circuits and that allows us to actually answer different query classes uh, in polynomial time in the size of the model. And often this will be actually linear time. So it's, it's actually quite fast in, in practice. Um, without really going into detail what the, what the constraints actually look like. So, so one example I think was um, mentioned in, in Mikhail Sog was also like decomposability. Um, so if you're given these uh, properties that, that make essentially sums and products behave nicely like uh, mixtures or factorizations, if you're familiar with uh, these terms, then basically we can compute any marginal probability, basically compute um, arbitrary uh, integrations in linear time in the size of the circuit. And all we're doing is again, given some values, plug those values in at the leaves, um, and then for the variables that you want to integrate out, just plug in the, the marginals at the leaves, again, do a, a feed forward evaluation, just 
computing weighted sums and products. And at the root, we, we get our marginal probability. And, and the, you can do this um, for arbitrary you know, integrals, whatever variables you want to marginalize out. It's essentially the same field board uh, evaluation. Okay, so we can compute um, some, some queries efficiently. And the idea is going to be, depending on what queries you, you care about, we can define um, what circuit properties you need to actually compute that efficiently. Um, so to actually give uh, an example um, in the fairness domain, so the problem we considered here is um, we are um, trying to learn um, a classifier, but the labels that we're given is not actually the true target that we want to predict. So this might occur, um, for instance, if you're trying to um, make, let's say, hiring decisions, if you want to, you know, so the goal is to, to predict someone's job performance, let's say. So that's like a latent uh, variable that's inherently kind of hard to um, represent. Often what you get is like a, a, a historical data of you know, employee uh, reviews or, or previous uh, promotion records. So in an ideal world, these should be the same, same variable. Um, but in, in practice, in, in real world data, they're you know, very closely correlated, but often not equal. Okay. So the setting is, given that we, are, um, we just see the observed like, uh, historical promotion record, can we infer uh, something about the, the hidden uh, true target variable, which in this case was actually that person's uh, job performance? And we're going to do this by um, in, uh, explicitly encoding the fact that what we're seeing in, in the data, the labels that we're seeing, are um, biased versions of the true target that is actually hidden. So we're going to encode that in our probabilistic model and then use inference to um, un uncover these hidden fair labels. So I'll kind of give a, a very sort of high level uh, idea. Like I said, we, we are going to um, explicitly you know, encode the fact that there, there is a hidden fair label that we're actually not seeing the data. So this just becomes like a latent variable that we are um, introducing on, on, on our model on top of all the variables that we see in the data. Okay. So this is just some latent variable we, we introduce in the model. Um, we need to give it a proper meaning. We need to make sure that this actually is the, the um, fair label. And the labels that we are seeing in, in data is some, somehow like a noisy or biased versions of that. So sparing you, you so the, the details, basically this can be done by um, um, in, enforcing some group fairness on this latent uh, latent variable, which in the case of probabilistic classifier basically ends up being some uh, a couple of independence assumptions about the distribution. And given the, the, sem the recursive semantics of the circuit, we can actually encode this kind of assumption um, as a hard constraint on, on the circuit, actually by fixing some structure in a, in a clever way. Right? So in um, whatever distribution we get out of, out of the circuit, we are guaranteed that the independence assumptions we wanted will hold. Given those assumptions, we're going to um, learn the, the joint distribution over all the variables, including the, the latent variable, um, in a way that best explains, explains the data. So we could use this to um, make predictions about the, the hidden uh, label. Um, you could also, for instance, um, use this to take some data and then clean it up by, for, um, by you know, inferring what the hidden label should have been for each data sample based on, based on the observations uh, you see. How this can be used is, is essentially um, because we can infer these uh, conditional probabilities very efficiently, um, we can clean the data efficiently and then fit it into some, some uh, down, downstream tasks. So for instance, 
given some arbitrary classifier, um, probabilistically uh, reason about how fair that that classifier is with respect to this hidden uh, fair labels, and also enforce other notions of fairness on, on that um, hidden label. Um, let me wrap it up uh, real quickly. Um, so in addition to this kind of trustworthy AI problems, to develop a framework, I'm also really interested in, in um, how we can uh, characterize this, this tractable inference and, and push it further. Um, like I said earlier, this uh, sort of involves for, um, for different queries, characterizing you know, what, what circuit properties we might need um, to actually answer those efficiently um, for interesting, interesting queries uh, that, that can be for different uh, complexities. And um, I'm also you know, interesting how, interested in how we can push that further, how we can um, kind of come up with um, new inference algorithms for a given query in a systematic way. So without having to start from scratch, can we, um, can we reuse as much as, uh, can we reuse what we know as much as possible? And I'll kind of leave this as a teaser for that idea which was um, we can answer queries, but um, to try to, in trying to characterize how we can answer queries efficiently, we can instead focus on those little components that, that uh, go into answering the query and characterize when we can do these operations efficiently, which we can then you know, compose like Lego blocks to answer other, other queries. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to also talk about this more more offline, but I'll just leave this here as, as a little diagram of, of a reminder of that idea. Thank you. Maybe a quick question if there's any. All right, so the final talk, the Meet the Fellows event. So, uh,